Welcome to Danny Designs, I'm Danny Level 100, and today I want to talk to you about creature design in the movie A Quiet Place. And a quick heads up, there will be spoilers. A Quiet Place is a 2018 American science fiction horror film directed by John Krasinski, who you might know as Jim from The Office. In this movie, the Earth has been invaded by aliens that hunt by sound. These creatures are fast and deadly, capable of ripping through steel with their bare claws and withstanding bullets and bombs. A Quiet Place was pretty successful with critics and moviegoers alike. There's one thing you should know about me. I love creature features. I love sci-fi movies. I love horror movies. I've been watching them since I was a kid. When I heard about A Quiet Place, it sounded like just the kind of movie I'm into. But lo and behold, I was actually pretty disappointed with it. Surprisingly enough, the biggest problem I had was with the monster. The creatures have an exoskeleton that is so durable, it essentially acts as armor, rendering them effectively bulletproof. For me, part of the fun of creature features is thinking about how would I survive? How would me and my friends and my family, how do we get away from this monster? This And I don't think it's just me who thinks of movies this way. I know zombie movies were really popular because despite most people not being capable of going camping, it's fun to imagine what you would do in The Walking Dead's universe. For me, making the creature invulnerable to bullets and bombs just seems a little flawed. It feels like someone turned on the god mode sheet and it takes away some of the fun of the movie. Another thing you don't know about me is that I'm a little bit of a gun nut and I know that one 50 caliber bullet can easily pierce level 4 body armor. One of these level 4 body armor plates is about 0.75 inches thick. If we look at the creature, it has an exoskeleton but that exoskeleton appears to be kind of thin. If you had layers and layers of these armored plates on the creature, I could kind of see how that would work, but the design of the creature is thin and agile. To put it bluntly, it doesn't look bulletproof. And yes, I'm aware that the creature is from another planet and that its exoskeleton could consist of material that is stronger than anything we have here on Earth. Another issue I had with them is that the fact that they don't seem to eat what they kill. So what do they eat? Why do they kill? Do they kill simply because sound hurts them? I also find it kind of laughable to think that the entire Earth's military would be defeated by these creatures since they seemingly are just wild animals and have no real intelligence beyond hunt and kill. And you might be saying to yourself, well Danny, humans don't have anything that can hurt them. All we have is bullets and bombs. But that isn't true because humans already have an acoustic based weapon known as the long range acoustic device, also known as the LRAD. This is a sonic device used by over 20 countries in the world in their navy, military, police forces, and you think for a second, even accidentally, somebody would find out that, hey, these creatures are weak towards loud noises and high pitch frequencies. You think blasting them with an LRAD would basically either kill them or freeze them in their place due to pain. You think eventually somebody would try to use one of these devices on a creature. A small blast of one of these devices would effectively make these creatures helpless. The creature might be invulnerable to bullets and explosives, but not from the sound that an explosive would make. The shell shock from an exploding grenade or missile would most likely stun this creature at the very least. John Krasinski had this to say about the design of the creature. The idea behind all that is, they're definitely aliens, and they're an evolutionarily perfect machine. So the idea is if they grew up on a planet that had no humans and no light, then they don't need eyes. They can only hunt by sound. They also develop a way to protect themselves from everything else. So that's why they're bulletproof in all these things. In the article, he also goes into further detail about his mindset behind the movie. He talked about how the aliens are so vicious, they decimated the population. There was no time to stop and think, it was just something that happened suddenly. And I do like that idea, a paradigm shift where humans are no longer on top of the food chain. I feel like this is kind of convenient. Hundreds of thousands of creatures invade Earth and they're also bulletproof. Something about that doesn't sit well with me. It just seems like of just an easy way to make the creatures scary. One of the biggest issues I have though is that I just simply don't like the creature's design. I feel like it's way too modern. It feels like the rake or something for the Slenderman generation, but it really lacks some punch. Like if you just showed me that creature, I would never have guessed, oh, that's from a quiet place. Only time will tell if it will be as iconic as Predator or the Xenomorph or even the monsters from Attack the Block. It's certainly lacking something and I kind of want to redesign this creature a little bit. But before we can do that, let's take a look at a couple other monsters that may have inspired the design of the A Quiet Place monster. Off the top of my head, there are two similar creatures to the A Quiet Place monster. The first one is the future Predator from the TV show Prime Evil, which debuted in 2007. 
The Future Predator, much like the Quiet Place monster, hunts with echolocation, is gray, lanky, agile, and very deadly. However, the Future Predator isn't bulletproof. It is very durable and can shrug off most bullets to the torso. It can still be killed by being smashed or shot. And just like any other creature on Earth, if you shoot it in the head, it will die. One of the main differences here is that the Future Predator demonstrates human intelligence and is more than capable of outsmarting and outmaneuvering its prey, making it quite a formidable opponent. The second creature I can think of would be the Night Stalker. Behold, the glory that is the Night Stalker. A large, ferocious, pack-hunting, flightless, leaf-nosed bat that has evolved thousands of years after the extinction of mankind. It runs on its hands, its legs, or its arms. It has these giant ears and nose that it uses to find prey. It's blind, but uses echolocation. It has menacing fangs and claws that it uses to attack and kill its prey. It's basically like a giant land piranha. What I like about the Night Stalker's design is it takes a creature we're familiar with, a bat, and turns it into this absolutely frightening nightmare creature. For me personally, I would love to see something like this instead of the creature we have in A Quiet Place because this feels believable and we know since it's not going to be bulletproof, there'll still be a chance for humanity to fight back against these creatures. If I were to create a creature for a quiet place, I'm going to base it heavily off the Night Stalker. I want it to be a large, bat-like creature with powerful legs, something that you know can run fast, but if it gets up close, it can tear you to shreds with its big, powerful claws and sharp fangs. Over most terrain, these creatures would be very fast, exceeding speeds of over 40 to 50 miles an hour. It would also be an adept climber, easily scaling buildings or trees. My creature would demonstrate a high level of intelligence and adaptability, capable of using its large sensitive ears to hone in on prey and stalk them before pouncing on their prey and using their strong back legs, they would begin to tear into the flesh of their victim while holding onto them with their forward legs and jaws. On a completely physiological level, they can adapt to most climates by either shedding their fur for warmer climates or growing more fur for colder climates, making them a highly adaptable predator. However, their ears are very sensitive and extremely loud noises can cause them pain. And depending on how loud that noise is, they might lash out at the source or flee. And I know you might be saying, well, Danny, how do these creatures destroy the human population? I imagine that these creatures somehow got to Earth. Maybe there was a crashing UFO that had tons of these creatures aboard. They were scattered across the globe. They began looking for food, finding easy targets in livestock. With livestock being decimated, food prices go way up. There's chaos and panic in the cities. And as the people are rioting, the creatures swoop in and it's a bloodbath all over the world. Very similar things are happening to major cities. However, as time went on, the large packs became a lot smaller, typically down to one to three creatures per pack. After that, things kind of quiet down a little bit and that's where the movie would take place. In the 1987 film Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger says this. If it bleeds, we can kill it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. This isn't just a cheesy macho line in a 1980s film. This means so much more. It's about hope. In the face of an unknown enemy, humanity has a fighting chance. A monster that bleeds can be defeated. And that's why I really don't like the creature from A Quiet Place. The fact that it's impervious to all weapons it's supernatural. It no longer exists in the same realm humans do. A Quiet Place isn't a bad movie, and if you enjoyed the movie, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever your thoughts on the movie are, I'd love to hear it. Did you like my new creature? Did you think the creature from A Quiet Place was perfect as is? I'd really love to know your thoughts and opinions on this. And if you like the video, please give it a like, a thumbs up. You can check me out on my social media, all right here. If you want to help support the show, you can check out my Tee Public page or go to danlevhun.com click on the Amazon ads and buy whatever you want. By shopping through these ads, I make a small cut of whatever you buy. It's a fantastic and easy way to help support the show. And links to everything will be in the description, all my sources and articles, links down below. And I want to say thank you to everybody for watching. I'm Danny Level 100, and I'll catch you later. Take care. Goodbye.